two things. And as a metaphor, she's a mom, she describes how the girls behave. So if I were to say my classroom is full of angels, that would mean you were all very good students, right? That's a metaphor. I'm not comparing you like a sibling would to something else. I'm saying you are that. So discussing, let's discuss my heart is broken. Does that mean my heart is really broken? No, no that just means I maybe I'm sad. Or it's raining cats and dogs, like it has been really past week. It's raining really, really hard. All right, good job. A hyperbole is a statement so exaggerated that no one believes it to be true. These are very dramatic statements, probably something that would never happen. Happily, they're used to make a point. For example, I have a million things to do. I have a lot of stuff I need to get done. I don't really have a million things to do. do I? No. no, I just have a lot of things I need to get done. So I'm making a statement, I'm making a point. Okay? That's what that means. So it was so cold, I saw polar bears wearing jackets. Oh, no, polar bears don't wear jackets. But what is the person trying to say by saying that statement? It's, it's very, very cold. cold. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. No, you like you're, just so, you're, you're just very really starving. Hungry. You're starving. You're very hungry. But you're not actually going to eat a horse. No. You're saying that because you want to convey that you are very hungry. You're being dramatic. It's another way to think of it. All right, personification. Um, Look, think of this one as, look at, this is a clue. So remember how I said earlier, clues? Look at the word person in this word. That's this whole word right here. The first part of it says person. This gives animals or objects human-like characteristics. For example, an expression, expression such as these flowers are crying out for water tells us the flowers really need to be water. It also implies that they have a voice, a human characteristic, okay? So the flowers are not human beings, and they cannot cry out for water, but we're giving them a human-like quality because we're saying that they really need water, right? We're saying they really need some water. So remember that, personification, remember the word person. Like, let's look at this example. Lightning danced across the sky. Is lightning dance? No, but humans dance. It's a way of painting a picture to a, a reader, right? That's all, that's all these figures of language do. It helps you imagine it in your head. Automatopoeia. Everybody knows about automatopoeia, right? We all know automatopoeia. Adrian, what's on automatopoeia? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are words that make a, <coughs> they mimic a sound of the object or action it refers to. So what does a frog say? Ribbit. Ribbit. That's an example of one. Some actions could be like I chew, some sneezed, yawn, that's one. The sheep went back, the chickens were plucky, that's all I'm not here. All right, idiom. Idiom is a word phrase that means something different from its literal meaning. The expressions don't exactly mean what, what the words say. For example, to say someone hit the roof means they got very angry. It doesn't mean they actually hit the roof. An idiom. I want um, someone, if you can remember, last week we read Jars of Hope, and there was an idiom in the book, and I believe it was also in the quiz. So does anyone remember what that idiom was? It was something about drowning. I'll give you that oh. Give them a hand. What did she mean when she said someone is, if someone is drowning, give them a hand? Help them. Right? Very good. That's a, that was an idiom, correct? Did she literally give someone a hand? No. No, that meant they were in help and she was helping him, right? So it was a piece of cake. What does that mean? It was easy. It was easy. It slipped my mind. It just like it came popped away. It just popped away. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Just give it a shot. All right. Very good. Alliteration. Alliteration is when words that start with the same sound are used close together in a phrase or sentence. The sound is usually a constant. Words don't have always don't have to always be right next to one another. So ants on an apple, they have the same beginning sounds. Okay? That's how that's alliteration. Here's some other examples. Wiggly worm, lazy lizard flying like lumps. Coco, co 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 Mickey Mouse. Stuff like, words like that, things that sound similar, they have first beginning sounds, they maybe they maybe they rhyme. Something like that. That's alliteration. Okay, so before we move on to our next activity, I'm going to talk to you about it. 
So we're going to use the skills we've learned in the escape room activity. Anyone know what escape room escape rooms are? Oh, 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 awesome. You're going to be placed in groups of four, and I already have worked out who's going to be the two. And use teamwork skills to click four riddles using figurative language. Listen, I can make this. I need mouse gloves and I can make One, okay, so all everyone in your group, you're going to um, go on Google Classroom in just a second, not yet. You're going to go on Google Classroom and click the link. Thumbs up or anything like that, and then once you get there, just pause and I'll give you further instructions. Alright, click on that. Yes, that link. The first one. It should be the first one. Alright, now click on that blue link. Um, I know. I'm going to tell you what to do. Click on that blue link. Okay, I want you to click on the link in your URL bar. Right there, that top bar where that link goes. See it? You can point it right here. This is called a URL. I want you to go to the last, very last part and erase prefill. Do not erase the whole thing. Erase that prefill part. Just the prefill. Press enter again and it'll lock you in. Don't erase the whole link. Just the prefill part. So, if you say this is onomatopoeia, then it equals O. 
or if it's a metaphor, then it equals I. You flip. You want of these letters, that gives you code. And then you have to unscramble that code. Once you unscramble the code, you can put it into your Google Forms. Our task three, read the text below. Identify each type of figurative language that is underlined and write it in the box directly next to it. Use the first letter in the figurative language for your next code. And then these are just true and false statements. Each true and false statement is your answer. So you would put in true and false. T F T F. Okay. So pay attention because I'm going to put you in groups. So listen to your name, and you can sit on the floor or you can stay at your desk wherever you want to. Do. I might tell you. Never mind. Never mind that. I'm going to put. I'm going to tell you where to go. Group one, Grayson. Stand up. So if I if I call your name, stand up. Natalie. Never mind. Stay there. Uh, J N T. All right. Right. Yes, okay, yes, very good. That's right. Okay, I want y'all to go all the way to the back and sit next to Natalie. And I will bring you here. Grace. Back back there. Okay, group two Lydia, Abby, Jada I, and Jada G. I want you to sit right here. All right, group three, Solana, AJ, Kayla, and Anaya. Don't start until I set the timer and everybody see it. Thank you. 